Kathy Wood, welcome to the Symbio Beta Built with Biology stage. Thank you so much for being able to join us. Oh, thank you, John. I'm I'm so I'm sorry I'm not there in person. Uh, I know you had to change the dates. Uh, would have loved to have been there. Simon Barnett, uh, one of our three genomics analysts, will be there for the entire session. Uh, but I'm delighted to be with you right now. Thanks again for joining us. What on earth has been going on in the public markets with growth stocks and particularly with bio stocks? I mean, uh, it's just been a, a bloodbath out there. T tell us what things look like from your perspective. Yes, it's been a bloodbath. Uh, and it really started uh, February a year ago. It's been an entire year as the world began to uh, go back to work uh, with vaccinations, uh, fears of inflation and interest rates picked up and uh, and the first victims, uh, and it continues to this day, the, that were uh, the genomics names. And the reason is uh, the idea that interest rates go up and, uh, reduce the present value of future cash flows uh, because so many genomics companies uh, are unprofitable. They're pre-profits, as we say, sometimes pre-revenues. We do have to go out uh, pretty far and, and we're very reliant on that discount factor, which is the interest rate. Uh, and so we've seen many stocks cut to 20% of where they were at their peak. Uh, which, of course, uh, from our point of view, has created bargain basement pricing. If you're a private company, many of the companies as part of our ecosystem are, are not yet public. Um, what, what, would you, what advice would you be giving to them? Well, there are a couple of uh, pieces of advice. Uh, when times are good, uh, make sure you do go to the market uh, uh, regularly. Uh, but don't stretch too much. What we're seeing right now, especially in the private markets, is, uh, and given how bad the public markets have been, uh, that is starting to seep into the private markets. And so talent is reassessing, wait a minute, do I want to join this private company, which is just now going through down rounds, or do I want to join a public company? So you have to think very carefully, public company that has already been hammered. Uh, so you need to think very carefully at this time about talent. And of course, during the good times, uh, you know, fund away because the innovation taking place today is so uh, powerful in terms of the growth trajectories that we see ahead as we see, you know, innovation platforms and technologies converge uh, that only those with uh, enough capital and, and who are agile in this very fast moving world uh, are going to survive. And I also think making sure that artificial intelligence is a part, a, a, a part of your strategy because data is the name of the game here. To the extent you're anywhere in and around data, make sure you can harness it. Um, so, that's for the private markets. If you want to scale uh, and want to do it rapidly, again, as times get a little better, I would think about uh, going public uh, because I think the scaling opportunities are going to be magnificent. I've been learning a lot about AI, automation, machine learning, quantum computing by attending your weekly calls that you do as part of your open innovation ecosystem. It's amazing to see the breadth of your skills, your knowledge, and the breadth of the skills and knowledge of your analysts. But that's not typical for you to have this open research ecosystem. It's not typical in the financial markets. It's pretty typical in the academic world where people are sharing knowledge and connecting with other people. And the synthetic biology ecosystem is a very open and collaborative one. Tell us a little bit about what you do every week and how you go about sourcing your research and how you bring people into this open ecosystem that you've created? Sure. Well, we've set up, first thing, we've set up our research team to specialize in technologies. Unlike traditional research in the asset management world, which focuses on sectors and sub-industries, we focus on technologies. Our analysts are specialists on technologies generalists when it comes to sectors, because we think these technologies are going to cut across sectors. 
So that's the first thing. When you say the breadth of knowledge, it is because of how we've set our research ecosystem up. We give our research away, we push it out, and this is original research, uh, really focused around rights law, uh, which is a relative of Moore's law. Uh, we give our research away um, through social media uh, because we want to engage with and become uh, a part of the communities we're researching, including the genomics community. And I do think that Simon, Allie, and Pierce are doing a very good job at that. In terms of the brainstorm that we have every Friday, very often we will find uh, these people uh, through conversations on social media. And uh, often they're professors at uh, universities doing research in graduate schools. Uh, they are entrepreneurs passionate about uh, figuring out how the world is going to work uh, in, any of the, in any of the areas of innovation. Um, uh, and I think the other power of our uh, brainstorm is, again, this idea of convergences. We see uh, that our artificial intelligence analyst, Will Summerlin, is able to talk to our genomics analysts because neural networks are patterned after the brain. And so we'll have a very collaborative, interesting discussion coming at the world from different angles. And this does not happen in other investment firms. In fact, there are turf wars in other investment firms. We have a very collaborative environment and we bring those from the outside during our brainstorm to collaborate with us, to push back. We don't want to become our own echo cha chamber and start preaching during this brainstorm. And sometimes we have a tendency to do that, actually. We want more people to come in and push back. Kathy, if you take a long-term view, which I know that you do, you look at five-year cycles, you're investing, uh, looking at companies uh, and the revenue that they're predicting in five years' time. But the market looks at a quarterly cycle. Um, and so you often get these these horrible um, cycles and ups and downs. Um, if you could wave a magic wand and tomorrow reinvent a stock market that looks more for the long term than the short term, what would that look like? Well, it would be back to the future. It's where I started at Capital Group in 1977. We had no choice but to look out well into the future. I remember 1977, we were looking at Hong Kong 1997, the changeover, right? And that was 20 years. I said, this is the industry I want to join. What has happened since the tech and telecom bust and the 0809 meltdown uh, is this risk aversion and this very short-term focus, uh, which has really roped uh, analysts and portfolio managers to their benchmarks, the benchmarks marks against which they're measured, I would abolish those. That would be my that would be the first thing I would do, uh, because they are backwards looking. Uh, the The companies uh, that are at the top of those indexes are there because of past successes, and if we're right. And the world is going to be disrupted, not only in the genomic revolution, uh, uh, but also uh, with adaptive robotics, energy storage, blockchain technology. I mentioned artificial intelligence. It's involved in all of those. If we're right on how quickly those are going to evolve and how those S-curves are going to be feeding S-curves, uh, then the traditional world order is going to be disturbed, if not destroyed in many ways. The other side of disruptive innovation is creative destruction. And so looking to the past, uh, tried is true, is going to be a failing strategy. And we see those indexes being populated increasingly by value traps, stocks that are cheap for a reason. They're going to be disintermediated or the companies are going to be disintermediated or disrupted. So I think right now we're beginning to see true visionary leaders stand up to short-term shareholders. Um, we've certainly seen that uh, with, well, we saw it with Amazon. That was one of the first proof of concepts. Uh, uh, remember, Amazon was supposed to go uh, bankrupt in, in the day. We've seen it with Tesla, the same thing. Tesla was supposed to go bankrupt. But these companies had 
big, these management teams had big ideas and they were not going to let short-term shareholders hold, hold them hostage. Uh, and so they winnowed their, their um, holder base to long-term oriented shareholders. And, you know, we often have companies coming to us saying, what would it take uh, to, to get into your portfolio? Which is a wonderful question for us. We know what we're looking for. And it is because we are the, the closest you'll find to a venture capital fund in the public equity markets. We have a very long-term point of view. And I think the companies that are serious about investing aggressively now to capitalize on these opportunities, we want them to forego short-term profitability in order to move into lead positions in these winner-take-most worlds. Uh, so I don't think we're going to change mindsets, but we need more visionaries who are willing to stand up to uh, short-term shareholders because guess what? Truth will win out. And those who are playing the old game will lose. And those of us who are playing the long game will win. Kathy Wood, it's an honor to be able to speak with you today. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your commitment. And thank you for the support of the synthetic biology industry. Sorry that you couldn't be here in person, but we do appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you so much, John. And I'm sorry I wasn't there as well, but I wish you all a wonderful conference.